Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 251 for Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. Folks, and welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Here, as always, these days in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in San Jose, California, it's Paul Kent. How are you today, Mr. Kent? I'm doing good. I'm sheltering in place. I'm washing my hands. I'm keeping six feet distance. I'm going a little crazy, though, because I miss my guys. I miss playing. I miss... Uh, yeah. I miss I miss life, but you know we we got to go do what we got to do right now, and then we hopefully we'll get back to. It. You think this is going to come back? You think we're going to have live music when this all comes back? Oh yeah, we're we're going to head back into. I I think we're going to have our own version of the Roaring Twenties when this comes back. I think people are going to be excited I'm to see you in a flapper dress. Let's say yeah. Oh, I'm I'm wearing <laughs> it now. <laughs> uh, you know, this is episode two fifty one. As I said. If we rewind a, a scant 200 episodes back to Gig Gab 51 in 2016, we w had the pleasure of being joined by Steve Witchell, who had at that point in time recently started Cover Band Central, a website, a Facebook group, a Facebook page. He had 16,000 people on the Facebook uh, page at that point in time in 2016. He now has 56,000 members to the group and 156,000 followers to the page here in 2020. And even better than that, he's on the show today. Steve Witchell, thank you so much for rejoining hey, Steve. us. Yes, what's up, fellas? Thanks hey. for having me. Yeah. I remember, I remember when I talked to Steve about first coming on that show and we exchanged a couple of Facebook messages and we had a quick chat. And it was like a good meeting of the minds. You know, Steve was like, yes, you know, you guys are doing the right thing for the, for the right reasons. I want to, I want to talk to your people. And I felt the same way. And Steve, yeah. as, as I've watched Steve build his community, I mean, talk about a guy whose heart is in the right place and just cares about musicians and started this as a labor of love, a service for musicians. And um, I just love it. The conversations that happen, the way that you talk to this large assembled mass, you know, I've seen you do things after disasters and difficult times. And I just think it's really cool how you scaled, yet you kind of keep the idea that we're all musicians, which is really what Gig Gab is about. Tell me what you think uh, you've learned from seeing these massive threads and talking to musicians. What have you learned about cover band musicians around the world? Uh, yeah, you know, like I said in the beginning when I was on the show the first time, um, I just knew that we all had this kind of common thread regardless of where we live or what our age is or demographic is or, uh, or languages or, or style of music. And um, and that's been proven to be true over the years, um, seeing what people talk about. So um, that that's one major thing. I've also learned that there's a lot of talent, too, which I, I already knew, but that was kind of one of the reasons that I wanted to start the whole thing anyway because above everything else i've been a musician for 36 years, 36 years i don't know but, that's impossible given your age but you know there you go <laughs> but uh but above all of that I, i'm a music fan so i really love discovering new talent um <clears throat> uh you know just just hearing it and seeing it uh, like uh, new voices or new ways of playing a guitar or new ways of of tackling a cover song um all that that's been really inspiring for me and you know paul it, it's really interesting now that now that i think about going back to that when you first reached out to me because i mean it was sixteen thousand people on the page at that time which was uh, for me it was a lot that's great um, yeah let's not minimize that that's fantastic yeah absolutely right. yeah. But, but it still kind of blows me away that you paul you found you found me and you liked what what was going on and you reached out um, you know, way back then, 200 episodes ago. So, <laughs> um, it, so I, it, clearly it's, it worked in the beginning and it's still, it still has been working over the years. So, um, you know, I'm really, I'm really, uh, I hate the word. You should be proud. I mean, the conversations are just so. 
Well, you so said, interesting. He said something interesting. You said something interesting here. You said, you know, primarily you're a music fan. And I think in order to be a successful cover band musician, especially a cover band musician, I mean, I think it, it's fair to say that most musicians are music fans. But if you're out there playing cover tunes on a regular basis, I, I mean, I think that is one of the sort of... Uh, 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 one of the ways that, that you can celebrate being a music fan, right? I mean, you're playing these songs that either you like or you know other people like, and and it that's the one of, I don't want to say it's the ultimate representation of being a music fan because I don't want to minimize what other folks are doing that aren't musicians, but it is a great way to celebrate be, being a music fan. And I think it's it's kind of table stakes. You got to be a fan of music in some in some way to go out and, you know, slog it through playing cover tunes every night. So And that's what kind of comes out to me from all these conversations. I mean, when Steve says share your set list and then thousands and thousands of people are sharing set lists and getting cool feedback, share a video of your band and thousands and thousands of bands share a video and get some constructive feedback. I mean, you do kind of get that vibe that there is this communal brotherhood and sisterhood of, of cover band musicians. You know, some of them are you know, obviously touring original music musicians who do covers when they can. But, you know. I don't know. It seems, what do you think, Steve? I mean, most of us start with covers. You learn to play the guitar, you learn to play an instrument because you love something and you want to re recreate it. You know, it, it's kind of in everybody's DNA to think about covers in, a, in one way or another, don't you think? Sure. Yeah. I, I've always said that people didn't pick to learn scales. You pick up a guitar to learn a song. Generally, that's, that's what inspired, it's what inspired me in the beginning was that, you know, I want to learn how to play that song. Uh, you know, of anybody who's who's an idol of mine or, or a fan of. But I think <clears throat> I agree with you, Dave, that, that um, you know, it, it pretty much is across the board that people who play in cover bands are fans of music. I'm a little more over the top with it. I'm, I'm an uber music fan because mm. I, I don't really sit around watching TV every day. I listen to music. Yeah. You know, that that's what keeps me going and keeps me inspired. Um, so. You know, maybe I'm a, a little bit more of a music fan than than the, the general public is. What are you listening to right now? I, I well, my favorite thing in the world is one, and I know I was a, I was a little late to this party, but I got the the Echo units, um, and I can't say her name right now because then she'll start talking to me. But um, <laughs> right from Amazon. yeah, the, the, I, the a, we call her the A lady. Yeah, the, the a lady, right. That way, our listeners don't have theirs talking to them either, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I have, um, I have about five thousand songs that I put in my in a playlist, like a master playlist. Yeah, and and I have seven of those units around my apartment. I have one in every room, so I just shuffle. You know, usually that's what I'll do, unless I'm in the mood for something in particular. I will just say shuffle my master list and and let it fly. And I have everything from from Broadway tunes to to you know metallica so sure. yeah. in between. so um i i don't have a, <clears throat> i mean i grew up a rock guy sure pop or pop rock i should say but i don't really have a particular genre that that i gravitate towards every day it's just i i like the variety yeah i'm the same way i oh. i i can't not I, I can't listen to the same style of music for too long uh, without without just wanting a change, I, because there's there's I, I learned, thankfully, and this actually is sort of, you know, feeding the music fan in me. Uh, there were styles of music that I did not think that I liked or didn't see anything in country music was a was was certainly, uh, you know, atop that list for me for a long time. And then I played country music. Uh, you know, I got hired to play a gig. It was like, all right, well, I, now I got to dig in and I got to I got to do this right. And I got to do it justice. And. Man, I found so many parts of it that I really liked. And I and over the years, I've learned there's something about everything that I that I can gravitate to and I can like sink my teeth into. And, uh, and yeah, I like that variety. I'm with you, man. I'm different than you guys in that. I, I probably have 20 to 25 bands that are like the core of my existence. And I can listen to them over and on a keep fine. Like I can listen to the Stones and find something new and different to learn in guitar parts to steal all the time. Yeah. I can listen to obviously Springsteen all the time and find like, what was he going through in his life and how did that affect the lyric that he wrote? And just tremendously interesting to me. So everything from song meanings to guitar tones, I am still a thousand years into it, still finding new things to be wondered by, you know, from the, from the artists that really shaped my existence. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. 
Yeah, I, I have different, different, I have some perspective on it. Yeah, I have some favorite artists that I have a ton of their tunes on on my playlist there that come up all the time. So so I, I enjoy that too. Yeah. You know. So Steve, now we're in this kind of strange and interesting uh, state of the universe right now. And for musicians, you know, a large part of what is shaping our view, keeping our time, keeping us in touch with our audiences, offering potential revenue streams, obviously is this concept of streaming. And I know you've done a lot of work, talked to your audience, done some writing on it. I thought we would spend a little time just asking you what you're thinking about, about you know, streaming in general, technologies, the opportunities for musicians, things that you've learned, things that you've seen. Let's, let's just riff on about streaming and the opportunities there for a while. Yeah, I, I, I was on the live streaming thing when it first was introduced by Facebook, which was early 2016. So, so around the time when I did the, the uh, show with yeah, you guys back, back then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I saw it as like a, a really good opportunity for, for musicians and just for me in general at, at first, because I was doing cover band central trying to build it. And I was like, Ooh, this is a good way for me to just talk to the audience. So I kind of started it early and in the beginning, and I know you're talking about OBS last week in the, in the beginning when I was doing live streaming, I was using OBS and a big, uh, factor for me was having a green screen because I wanted to have a, like a good background and, you know, make it appealing to the eye. And, and I figured you look like way. you live in a recording studio with your background. Right. It's awesome, man. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a green screen. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish that was my studio, mm-hmm. man. That was really nice. Hey, um, fake it till you make it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I, yeah, I wanted to make it look pro- more professional and, and kind of present myself that way. So, yeah, well, you put up you put up an, an article just this week, uh, live streaming made easy: a musician's guide to Facebook Live, and we'll put a link to that. Yeah. Uh, and so there, helpful. You had some great little tips in there. You want to share kind of a couple of the things? We love tips, like yeah, we love them, but our listeners love them even more. So yeah, yeah. If you got any yeah. tips, that'd be good. Yeah, I would love to. Um, and the the thing is, with this whole new normal that we're we've been thrown into, a lot of musicians, like you said, going live streaming. For a lot of them, it's brand new, so they don't know what to do, how to do it. And I started with, as soon as this whole thing happened. My skill was the fifteen. Uh, even before that, I knew that we weren't going to be playing for a while. So I jumped right on this right away. I said, "Okay, we're not going to be working for a while. So I need to get into this community and help everybody." then you know a place to play still and things to do and and so i got out and did the live streams where i was just talking to people and saying uh you know here's how you do it and and i offered help right away saying i'll share your live stream if you're going live i'll share it on the cover band central page to that audience 156 thousand people um and you'll 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 likely reach a lot more people and maybe get more tips and whatever um so i i did that right away but then I, and I did it a bunch of times over the last few weeks. But the the problem with that is that unless somebody is watching me live or they take the time to go back and watch the replay, which a lot of people don't do, then they didn't get these tips. So I was like, I got to write this down so people can can refer to it. So I did that. The And I had been meaning to do it for a while, but I, I ended up doing it the other day. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, we could go over every single one of those tips, but um, if you want... Um, but, uh, uh, some of the, the biggest one, go ahead, Dave. Well, I was going to say, I was going to guide us a little bit, but one of the biggest ones I think is y- you've, and you've been on this bandwagon for a while. Thank goodness about flipping your screen for Facebook live. Oh, God, it drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that it, it like, it's a good thing that it drives you crazy because you've helped people solve this problem. So is there a way audibly that you can explain how to solve this? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, I mean, we'll link well, to your, you, you did a piece on this too, and we'll link to that. Yeah. But if you can just yeah. kind of give a, an overview, a quick overview, that, especially specifically for Facebook, I think that would be helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, well, f- to start off, if you're live streaming you and you want to put the screen, you need to use an iPhone or an iPad. It doesn't work with an Android phone. They don't have that option on there. So that's Got which it. kind of stinks, but uh, there's a couple little things you need to, pre- uh, I'll try to describe what it looks like. Um, 
once you go to Facebook and you hit go live and once you hit go live, you're, you're not actually live yet. You have uh, the, the screen will show you what the audience is going to see. And generally, when people hit that, they're in selfie mode. So they're going to see themselves. And on that screen, there's a, a bunch of different icons on there that you can use to, to manipulate the screen. And one of the icons looks like a little magic wand with a little star on it. And what people need to do is press that before they do anything else, press that star. And then from there, they get a, a bunch of icons down on the bottom. And all the way to the right, there's a uh, an icon that looks like a, a wrench and a screwdriver uh, sort of overlap. Okay. Yeah. They press that. And then once they do that, there's three options. And the first one looks like a horizontal split screen. Second one looks like a vertical sp split screen. And the third one looks like the sun. Um, so the first one, the horizontal sp split screen is the one you want to press. And when you press that, you will see your image in the screen flip. And that's exactly what, that's what you want to do. OK, so it's that magic wand with the star on it is the path into these settings. And then you and then you hit the tools and you flip the screen in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because otherwise you're looking when you look at the screen, it looks like you're looking in a mirror. Yeah. And to and, and most people, it doesn't register to them that, oh, OK, that's what the audience is going to see. So a right handed guitar, guitar player, if you don't flip the screen, is going to look like a lefty. And if you have any writing anywhere like on your t-shirt or on a sign or anything in the background the writing is going to be backwards right. so it's not that big a deal really uh as far as the content is concerned however it does to me it, de it definitely makes a difference and if it makes a difference to me it probably makes a difference to other people it's i've noticed it an sure. anecdote real quick Go ahead. so i did my first stream last week and um i i spent a lot of time trying to get it right right so i set up a a private group to sound check it with a friend of mine who's a sound engineer to get, cause I, what I'm doing is I'm taking it right out of a mixer, right into the iPhone. Okay. So there's a USB out of my mixer. So you mix in the mixer and then I send it um, right into my phone. So I set it up and during the day, my, my stream is going to be at eight at night during the day. I, I set up a private group on Facebook, invited a friend of mine who's a sound engineer and he helped me get the levels right to what he was hearing. Um, and so we spent a lot of time. And, you know, I got the whole setup done, everything like that, and then uh, didn't touch anything. And then it came time to go live. And I did what you are describing to everybody. And um, all of a sudden, for some reason, right before, when I clicked the go live button, Facebook gave me a message and said, you need to flip your phone to um, vertical format or something like that. And I was upside down in the video, right? <laughs> and now, now here, here's the deal. Um, so that's a Facebook glitchy thing. Like I said, it was working fine during the sound check, all weird. Facebook decided that my phone on its side was not the way it wanted it. And, you know, um, but here, here's the point of all this, actually. It's a pretty unforgiving midi medium, right? It's not like, like playing live where a moment, you make a mistake, a moment goes by and it's, you know, it's hard. You are aware when you're performing, if you make a mistake, that that's recorded for eternity, right? And yeah. so I know the first 10 minutes of my thing. So, so first I had to like reset my phone, restart the live stream. I think it might actually have started a new stream and people had to leave the other one to come, come to this one or something like that. But yeah. I, I was rattled, right? You know, despite all of the setup and all of the prep, I was rattled. I was, you could see sweat on me in the, in the video and I noticed that and that got me more rattled. And then the first couple of songs, I was really tense. And that whole concept of just having it right and flowing, it's, it's a great tool. But like I said, in my mind, it's a pretty unforgiving tool and, um, and it's not perfect. It's not quite tap and go. Right. Um, and so I, that's just my reflection. That. And then once, you know, I saw everything was okay. Um, oh, and then when I started, my guitar was coming through, but my voice was not coming through again. It was just one line out of the mixer. So I had no idea what that was. And then eventually it all kind of kicked in. I don't know if it was a, if that's a, a Facebook, you know, compression thing or whatever it was, but it was weird for a while. I didn't touch anything. Then all of a sudden my voice came through as well. And, uh, and everything was cool. And it took about the first 15 minutes of the, of the live stream first five minutes just to get the tech right. And then the next 10 minutes, probably two songs, you know, for me to just relax and calm the hell down and, you know, just enjoy the playing. But it was, it was an unnerving situation for me the first, for my first time out going and doing it. And it all started with, I thought I was prepared. I hit the go button 
and I was upside down in the video and, and Facebook was telling me, move your phone or you know, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So Steve, you, of, yeah, you've offered some advice to folks about this. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of trial and error, man. You, you, you have to, I mean, what I suggest to people is to set it up, set, set it up the way you're going to live and then just record a video. No, like, once you go to Facebook, it's a whole different animal, but you still, you, you still can do a lot of preparation beforehand to to minimize the the, uh, the mistakes or the problem that you're going to have so yeah i suggest people set up their background especially um you know make sure it's appealing set up your lighting so everybody can be seen um a lot of people are writing signs which i i i don't for the life of me don't know why they're doing it i i, I know why they're doing it but it's just not effective there's a guy dude um that I know from New Jersey who who uh, is a really good player. He's he's a guitar player, singer, and he's gone live a few times and he gets a really good audience. Um, and the first time I saw him, he's I know he's a right handed player. And but he was he was showing up lefty. And I, I wrote to him and I, I said, you know, you can flip the screen and I here's a thing I wrote about it. Here's how to do it. And he said, uh, yeah, I'm OK with being lefty. I'm like. Uh, but it's you know it's not hard it's just click 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 you're done i said hey, all right cool man i'll look look into it then the next day he went live and he was still lefty but he had a sign written with his venmo and his paypal that was correct so i was like all right wait wait maybe i forgot maybe he is a lefty so i wrote him back i was like i need to apologize to you man i, I didn't realize you you were left i thought you were right-handed and he and he laughed and he's like i am right-handed i wrote the sign backwards I'm like, why would you take the time to write a whole sign backwards instead of just learning how to do this? That this takes way less time to learn how to flip the screen. I like, uh, I just, I have to shake my head at like what I don't understand the mentality of that, but. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's the brute force way to solve the problem. Right. But if, if he either just learned to flip it or even better would be to use something like OBS, which a will deal with the flip problem, but B would allow him to do an overlay with a much nicer sign that's digital and clean and clear. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's another one of the points to talk about in that article is a lot of people are taking tips and that's the way to go because there's no other way to make revenue right now. We can't play gigs, so you can take tips. And the most popular ways people are doing it are through PayPal and Venmo. And PayPal, if you have a PayPal account, you want to, want to set up a PayPal.me account, which is designed to take tips. And Venmo, same thing, it's designed to take tips. But people are putting, like writing signs in their you know in their their setup of their venmo and stuff and i just think that's an eyesore i don't think it it helps because you're you're making people work um and that the easy solution which for some reason is eluding most people is to write the link in the description first of all write a description before you go live a lot of people are going live and not writing any description right and this is and that on that same screen where you're going to flip the screen, it says they're at a description. So you want to write something. You want to say like, hey, I'm stuck at home just like you guys. I'm going to play some of my favorite covers and take your request. And then in that description, you put, if you'd like to drop some love in our tip jar, here is the address. And you type in the actual link, www.paypal.me slash your name. Dot com slash your name so people can click it and and tip you a lot of people are writing like venmo and then dash at and then putting their name why are you adding extra steps why are you making it difficult for people to pay you just put the link if people click a link then it takes them right to where they can tip and that's it done so that's that's another thing besides the flipping the screen thing that's been driving me crazy and <laughs> and i i wrote the article figuring okay i'm gonna get this information out to everybody you know they're gonna all see it and they're all gonna get it and it just it doesn't work that way it's in my head it's gonna work that way but it doesn't <laughs> yeah so sharing stuff on facebook it, it, it's, it's it's hard to figure it out because sometimes it will reach a ton of people what i share on cbc and then sometimes it'll reach nobody so i feel like not nobody but barely anybody right so so i wrote that article uh, the other night and shared it yesterday and it just didn't get much of a reach and i'm like 
I, I get so frustrated with that because I don't know what else to do. How else can I communicate this stuff to people who really need this information other than going to every single live feed I see and saying, hey, flip your screen. Right. And here's it. Right, so it, I mean, and that's kind of par for the course, man, with with me and Facebook running this thing now for for almost seven years uh, where I just. I'm just challenge after challenge, obstacle after obstacle, and I have to try to work around it. And then sometimes, like, it'll magically, like, it'll just start reaching tens of thousands of people, and I have no idea what it is. Right. Does that. Um, so. that, but that's just Facebook's algorithm. I mean, that's how that goes, you know. So do you have, uh, other than folks telling you, and I, and I know you, you limit uh, – the amount of posts that you're currently or the amount of streams that you're currently sharing to about 10 a day on the, on the cover band central group. But do you have any advice for folks for promoting themselves on Facebook? Yeah. I set it up ahead of time, schedule it ahead of time, create a Facebook event, which I, I say it in the article. It was in the past events have been kind of a nuisance because you, you get it and you let, you see it and you're like, I'm not going, you know, I'm not going out on Friday night to that place. I, I need to get a babysitter and, you know, and right. support. but now it's a whole different ball game now. So you can make events, you know, people are home. So you, you make an event and uh, describe exactly what you're doing in the event. Also put your PayPal and your Venmo information, put as much information as you can in that event and then invite a ton of people to invite as many people as you can. So this way, people get notifications if they're invited before you go live or right when you go live they'll get a no notification like dave hamilton is live you know so right. so having that is kind of an extra help to to build your audience steve uh, i got a question here so yeah. um there seems to be some confusion between the how you use setting up a facebook event and setting up a pre-scheduled um live stream so when you set up an event invite there's not really a direct connection between that and you you can't like copy a, a link into into the event invite as to where the stream is going to be. So what I've found is a lot of people don't really, they get confused. They don't understand. I responded to the event, but how do I find the stream? Not realizing they have to go to your page. And then the, the pre-scheduled streams on Facebook. So when you, when you go and set it up and say, I want to, I'm going to be streaming on Thursday at nine o'clock, there's no invite mechanism for that. Right. That just, you know, creates a, a post and the two don't really work together. So that mechanism of creating awareness, inviting people in an event um, is not really connected to the actual stream itself, which that seems like it would be I thought, you know, particularly useful. I thought That's you correct. could stream. I know with OBS, I saw the option to stream into an event. Uh, I don't get that with Memo Live for whatever reason, but I do see that in OBS. Is that not a thing anymore? I, I'm I'm only talking about using the Facebook's mechanism. So Got I don't it. know I don't know what OBS says, but in Facebook, an event invite and a pre-scheduled stream announcement are two very distinct things. They don't it. talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, Paul. I, and again, what you can do in the event invite is just put as much information as you can. Just say I'm going to be streaming from my personal page, and you can actually you can type out the URL even if you can't create a link with it you can at least type out the url but be as descriptive as possible because i'm the the sharing for people and i'm being very specific with what i want them to send me and it's it's the link to where you'll be streaming from and the time you'll be streaming including the time zone and that's all the information i need i don't need anything else so people will not listen to that and they'll send me event invites so then i have to kind of jump through hoops and find where they're streaming from or they'll send me uh, hey we're going live at eight o'clock like, eight o'clock where you know because yeah. <laughs> i you know, you know I, and i have to kind of uh, well i gotta see like uh, they're okay they're in illinois so i think that's central time so i have to you know it just creates a lot more work no for me, that's so. a, that's a good point put in you know when you make your little announcement put in some time put in the time zones put in your local time zone sure but you know list the time zone and then and then add you know eastern central and and mountain and pacific or you know whatever the other three are at least for the u.s but it also might be worth adding gmt there so that yeah. people elsewhere you know have some frame of reference yeah that's a good point yeah. man yeah yeah it's just it's one on sharon later in a few hours from now who is playing in dublin ireland right. so yeah 
and she understood, you know, that I need to know what time it's going to be here. So um, she's kind of a, a CBC veteran. So, <laughs> but, you know, I still have to kind of plan it out. I, I do it every day. I wrote my schedule for my sharing schedule on, on a piece of paper here. So I know it, you know, at 4.30, I got to be in front of the computer and share this thing. And, you know, it should go without saying, but people should go on on time too. So, so I don't have to keep refreshing the screen and, and wait for your live stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Because it's the same for, for anybody who wants to come watch you. Their uh, attention span is very, very limited on online, on Facebook especially. So if you're going to be there at a certain time, you should be there at that time. And uh, it's another thing I mentioned in the article. There's a lot of competition now because so many people are streaming. So if you're not grabbing somebody within the first 15 to 30 seconds, they're going to click off of you and they're going to scroll down and find somebody else that is playing and playing and it looks good and it sounds good and whatever. So, it, it, and you're also competing now with major artists because major popular artists are live streaming. Right. Everybody's equal. So, yeah. It's uh, yeah. 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 At least right now. But, but, you know, taking a lot of Steve's tips, like the, the things, you know, Make sure you look good. Make sure you, you know, your background is what you want people to see. Like th all of those things, add some lighting if you can. If you've got those, you know, those gig lights that you've got sitting in your uh, in your garage or your basement or whatever right now, set them up and make it look good. My friend Scott Winters, uh, he's a drummer and he just plays along to tracks live, right? you know, and uh and but he's got his lighting set up and it looks really good and yeah. it makes a difference, you know, really because does. because I'll rather watch him than somebody else who's got, you know, a bunch of junk in the background and, and it's barely lit. And I and the camera's angled so that all I can see is their head, not their hands like, you know, all of those little things add up to if somebody's doing it better, I'm probably going to gravitate to them eventually, even if you're all my friends, you know, it's, yeah. it's just how That's it goes. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Could yeah, because I've been watching, I mean, being in New Orleans, I have a lot of friends who are musicians and are, are doing this. And I'm thinking the same thing. Like, I really want to watch these guys, but that's like, I can't see that person or their left hand. I mean, I'm to the point where if they haven't flipped the screen, I'm not even going to watch it. because It just drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, that, but, and that's kind of what we were saying last week, you know, where, where I was equating or maybe two weeks ago, I don't know, I don't remember anymore. Um, every day feels the same, but you know, this reminds me of the beginnings of podcasting, whatever, a decade and a half ago where, you know, at the very beginning, didn't matter how your audio quality was. As long as you got the stream out and you like, you made it work. That was the win very quickly though. The, podcasts that actually cared about audio quality and all of that, they started to rise to the top and the other ones sort of fell off and it's the same here, but you've got to think video quality and audio quality. So yeah. yeah. Man. There's, there's a friend of mine I have in, in uh, that I met through CBC. His name's Mike Schulte and he plays in a band called the Port Tornadoes who are, yeah. who are really, really good uh, players. They're in um, Iowa and they did a live stream the other day where they have friends that run a, uh, some kind of, uh, video studio and they did a live stream from there and the studio setup is a big this big open space so there were just two guys from the band sitting on stools social distancing and both playing guitar and both singing and they had this really cool lighting set up from behind them it was like these uh see kind of vertical purple lights on stands at different heights about five of them and then they had lighting that we that i uh, you couldn't see that were lighting them and they had two or three cameras set up and I don't know how they did this. So I have to learn exactly how they did it, but they had two or three cameras set up and while they were live, somebody was switching the cameras. And so you could get a different view and the cameras were able to pan and zoom and fade from one shot to the other. And it just looks so professional awesome. yet. Yeah. And they're, they're good, really good players, good singers. So it looked like TV quality and but between songs, they're taking a drink of Budweiser. They're they're sure. you know they're they're like they're just shooting the shit and, and and it was very entertaining. Even though the songs they were playing, I didn't really know. Yeah. I was just watching them because it's, the quality was so good. So I'm like, oh, this is the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and it 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 makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah, and it, one other thing I'll say about this is it's super important, and this is a thing that I'm dealing with in groups so much lately since there's no real event invites. 
make your post public, make your stream public, make sure it's public before you go live. Because a lot of people, their default setting is friends or friends of friends or oh, whatever. Yeah. When they post. So it's essential that you make it public because so it's shareable and, um, you know, and get the, the biggest audience. Someone had asked me the other day if, um, if people who are not on Facebook can view Facebook live streams, do you know the answer to that? Uh, well, you have to go on to Facebook, but if you're not a Facebook member, is right. that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, you need to have a Facebook account to see a live, even a public live stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like, but, y- you know, you can stream to YouTube uh, and and then that is all visible to anybody, even if they don't have a Google account. Of course, you're not getting sort of the automatic exposure to your pre-existing Facebook friends, family, and, you know, all-encompassing audience there that, that you get, um, you know, that, that you would get on Facebook. So that's yeah, not, that yeah, good. yeah, they, you got to kind of balance it out. Or you can use a... Uh, you know, we've talked about Restream.io, which will stream to both YouTube and Facebook. Or if you're using, I don't think you can do it with OBS, but I know with Mimo Live, I can stream to multiple platforms directly from, you know, from my one computer. And so you right. can you can kind of get everything going. So, Steve, right. this has when been, I, oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, when, when I do live streams, when I'm just talking to the CBC audience, I use a thing called StreamYard. And. I love StreamYard. It's it's very easy to use. I can do overlays, um, and I can do the green screen, and I can also stream to uh, more than one location. So when I go live, I stream to the the CBC page and the CBC group at the same time. So oh. I, I like that. so that that's an option out there that people might want to explore. Oh, right. that's really smart. Even just double up on Facebook to two different places. That yeah, I like it. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Steve, this has been awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Uh, I want to, I want to keep going here, but it sounds like our, our, in the interest of audio quality, kind of taking my own advice, it sounds like our internet connections are starting to fall apart a little bit. So I think we're going to, we're going to wrap this here, but the good news is it means we get to have you back perhaps sooner than another four years. What do you think? I vote for that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Uh, Steve, you know, I just want to say the service that you provide musicians around the world is just awesome. You really need to be commended for the style and tone and, you know, just the nurturing nature of what you've done with Cover Band Central. You've done a great thing, man. Congratulations and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, check it out. Coverbandcentral.com is where uh, that's the website with all these articles that we mentioned earlier. And then, of course, there's uh, the Cover Band Central group and page on Facebook. So check it all out. And we'll put a link to Steve to your profile there, too, so people can check out what, what you're doing personally with, with your stuff. Although I'm sure all the stuff that needs to be publicized, you've, you've got access to Cover Band Central all the time. So you're going to use that, too, because you're a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man thank you so much stay in touch Steve yeah thanks for listening everybody we'll see you next week be like Steve always be performing that's it <laughs> <laughs>